Hi everyone, I'm Kristen Ma, author of Beauty Pure and Simple and creator of Holistic Vanity. Today you're joining me in my favorite room in the house, which is the bathroom where I apply all my lotions and potions. And I'm joined today by Joy McCarthy, who is a holistic nutritionist, blogger, and writer. And we're going to be talking about superfoods for skin health and hydration. So thanks a lot for coming and joining me, Joy. Thanks for having me. So I think I want to start off with just the basics and just an explanation for everyone of why eating for beauty is important. Yes, well it's very important and what I found even for myself is when I wasn't eating for beauty and I didn't have the best diet, it was reflected outwardly on my skin because every morsel you eat, uh, what you eat you become. So what I found was that it was affecting my hormones, um, increasing inflammation. So every morsel you eat can affect your hormones. Does it affect you know, how inflamed you are, which then is reflected on your skin? Definitely. And as a esthetician, I see that when people start eating properly for their body type and just uh, integrating more whole foods, it makes a dramatic difference on their complexions. Yes. And especially like a glow. That's what I often find you know, with my clients when they just start eating more wholesome foods, like less cooked foods, their skin really should, like it's so much of a good, they really get a glow on. And you know, those dark circles that often people have, those things are totally minimized you know, just by eating more detoxifying foods, glow, glow foods. Yeah, they radiate. Everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the point of this conversation is uh, how to infuse more hydration in the skin through eating because it's a dry, harsh oh, Canadian winter yes. right now. Yes. And sometimes you just feel like it's impossible to feel hydrated. So why don't you give us maybe like your top foods for skin hydration? Yeah, sure. Well, my absolute favorite, and it's also a good fat, are avoca avocados. But what a lot of people don't realize is that avocados are like 70% water. Huh. So it's a hydrating food, like even though it's so dense, uh, because of all those good fats, it's actually very hydrating. So those good fats do double duty because they also help to balance your hormones, huh. which is going to be important for nice skin. Secondly, I love leafy greens because again, they are so water dense but they're also so detoxifying. Mm -hmm. So anything that's detoxifying is going to help you have more clear, glowing skin, well hydrated skin. Um, and yeah, also so. in Ayurveda, leafy greens, because uh, most of them are slightly bitter, they're very good for cooling, which is great for inflammation. Yes, yes so true. So reducing redness. And they're such a rich source of vi like vitamins A, C, and K. And those vitamins combined together help to actually produce good oils in the sebaceous glands. Mm. And oil is a good thing, right? We want oil, oil. to yeah to <laughs> moisturize to moisturize our skin, which leads me into the third one, which is our omega threes. Mm. So making sure that you are eating fish, you know, one to two times a week. If you're a vegan, then you can get your omega threes from other sources like algaes. And of course, walnuts, uh, which are also amazing for your brain because they look like little brains. Mm -hmm. But I love all the good fats because, you know, it's not always just about water. It's about getting the fats because that truly helps to moisturize your skin uh, from the inside out. Uh, also, apples. Love apples. Pretty much all fruits and vegetables are really good for skin hydration because you're actually eating foods that are high in water content. But I love apples because they're also so liver loving because they have pectin. So again, they're detoxifying. So not only are these foods, you know, water rich, but they're detoxifying. And I like because also where we're living, which is on Ontario, that you can get local apples. Yeah, Whereas like if so you, delicious. I know. So you can just get them at the farmer's market and it's nice that they're grown yeah. so close to us. Yeah. Um, so I agree. I think that a lot, because going back to your point about fruits and veggies, I think a lot of people think about drinking water, but they yes. don't think about eating yeah. water. And most people, like when I look at people's, like if I look at most people's plate of food, mm. everything is so cooked. Like when I review people's food journals, everything's cooked, processed, and you're basically cooking all the water out of the food. Yeah. Um, I also love berries, like all kinds of dark berries because they're so uh, high in water but so high in antioxidants. Mm. So that's going to help the skin health as well. For sure, especially those of us looking to, uh, to delay signs of yes. aging. Yes, prevent <laughs> premature aging. Yeah, because a lot of people think that aging 
of the skin is just as you get older, but I actually think it's more a lack of antioxidants, right? right? Because then the free radicals are damaging your skin. So why not eat things like berries and apples and leafy greens that are so high in antioxidants and so high in water? And I also love berries because of the fiber and the seeds a lot of the time too. Yes. Great yeah. for uh, bowel elimination. Which yes. Is important for acne from yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, and happy bowel movements make everybody happy. Yeah, definitely. Um, so my next question is about foods we should avoid. Oh, so you okay. touched on them, but uh, what are foods that are dehydrating that, you know, especially in this dry season, we should be kind yeah. of, again. Well, there's quite a few of them, and everyone always hates when I tell them this, but sugar. Sugar is terrible for skin. Sugar is actually very de dehydrating. So, you know, you know, being a label reader and really knowing what's in your food because sugar is hidden in so many things. And then the more obvious things like caffeine. Caffeine's a right. diuretic, so it's gonna make you go to the washroom. You're gonna lose that water that you need. So for every one cup of coffee, you need to be drinking at least two glasses of water. Mm -hmm. um, also, green tea instead, like people who are, are coffee addicts, I always suggest, you know, adding in green tea because then you're still getting a little bit of caffeine, but yeah. it's not, it doesn't have that diuretic effect. Do you really like different teas and stuff? Oh, right? I love yeah. tea. I can't drink coffee because it makes me so crazy. crazy. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm having a, a panic attack. So yeah. I drink tons of caffeine-free tea, like herbal teas, um, but I can have a little bit of green tea. Yeah, just because it does make me crazy. Yeah, I, I love green tea and that's, you know, I love the taste of, of coffee, but, you know, too much caffeine is just so dehydrating and people know that because they're running to the washroom, you know, twice an hour. Yeah. Also trans fats, like all the bad fats, very dehydrating for the skin. That's like zapping the moisture out of your skin. So again, emphasizing the good fats and, you know, avoiding fried foods, avoid overcooking, you know, things like fish and creating the bad fats. So. No to trans fats. We know that they're bad for our heart. They're also really bad for our skin too. Yeah, and you were saying about drinking coffee you need to replace with um, double the amount of water. But yes. um, a question that I get all the time and I'd like to ask you is how much water should we be drinking? Now, obviously, depending on your size and your lifestyle, yeah. there will be a range. But how do people like decipher what that, that range yes. or... Uh, and that's a great matters. question because, you know, we hear in the media, oh, it's 6 to 8, then we hear 8 to 12, exactly. and you never know how much you're supposed to take. Then there's those formulas, right, of based on your body weight. I actually don't subscribe to any of those things. I look at people's diet and I say, okay, you're eating a ton of processed foods, all your foods are cooked, therefore you need to drink a lot more water, so on the higher end, 8 to 10. But someone like me, because, and a lot of my clients now who eat lots of raw fruits and vegetables, are drinking water, are not drinking coffee, you do, there's no way, if I drank eight glasses of water a day, I would drown. So you really have to assess, you know, what are you currently eating, right. and then decide from them. So it's anywhere from like six to 12, depending on how much you exercise, but then also really looking at, you know, how water rich are the foods that you're actually eating. Mm -hmm. So if you find that you're thirsty, a good indication that you're not drinking enough is when you're eating your dinner, eating a meal, if you're thirsty while you're eating, then you know that you need to increase your consumption of water. I don't know if that really answers your question, but basically it's different for everybody. For sure, but I think it's good that people understand that too, that they need to take all these variables into account. Instead yeah. of sort of those uh, cookie cutter um, yeah, guys. I'm saying. exactly, based on you know height, weight, blah, blah, blah. Another important thing too that a lot of people don't realize is making sure that you have enough sea salt. Uh, particularly if you eat a really clean diet, and I'm seeing this is becoming um, more common, you know, with people, they're either paying attention to their diet, they're eating a lot healthier, and yet they're drinking so much water, but they're constantly thirsty and their skin is dry. But salt, sea salt though, because there's tons of minerals, salt is going to help drive the water into the cell, right, to be, to, to actually hydrate your body. I mean, that's, I'm really simplifying it here, but yeah. salt is so important to actually retain some water. Yeah. So sea salt is important for, you know, getting the hydration in. Interesting, because also, um, I was talking to another esthetician, who's a holistic esthetician, um, and she was talking about salt for kidneys, so she was like, obviously if people have kidney weakness, that yes. you need to eliminate salt from the diet, but 
a little bit is important, like eliminate maybe not the word, but reduce salt significantly, but just a bit is important to Yeah, absolutely. I put a bit of sea salt, you know, always on, on my dinner because I'm, because when you're eating, you know, very simple whole foods, they don't have sodium. So, and I mean, there are foods that do like celery, for example, is, is a sodium rich vegetable. So if you're eating mm -hmm. lots of celery, that's, you know, a natural way to get it. But I consider sea salt to be a superfood. Oh, interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great! That's good news! Yeah. <laughs> Flavoring! We all love ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I think that we've taken away some really great information, but I wanted to ask where people can, you know, read up more on your yeah. recommendations and your view on nutrition. Where can we find you? So, my website is joyoushealth.ca and I've got tons of recipes there and lots of articles. I have updates pretty much three to four times a week. So if you're looking to get healthier, if you're just looking for some tips and inspiration, that's a great place to go. And also on Twitter, at Joyous Health as well. Great. So there you have it. If you want to boost hydration in your skin, tips from Joy McCarthy. And if you want to see other interviews with Joy and other health practitioners talking about holistic beauty, you can visit my YouTube channel, Holistic Vanity, or holisticvanity.com. But for now, I can say goodbye and have a healthy, happy day.